It is not unusual for a nation state to deploy its broadcasting organ to manage public opinion. This can range from subtle suggestion to blatant propaganda. Use of the Australian Broadcasting Corporation to manage opinion against Chappelle Corby to support the government position regarding its relationship with Indonesia therefore follows a well-established pattern. It embraces not only news output, but also culture and entertainment and guidance of commercial media channels. Government orchestration of commercial channels is primarily conducted through direct political contacts and perhaps through the ASIO, but sometimes the ABC is heavily engaged too. A number of established techniques have been employed, with one of the most obvious being the use of its Media Watch broadcast. In May 2005, when the public had directly viewed the reality of the Chappelle Corby case for themselves, Almost the whole of the Media Watch broadcast was dedicated to an assault on the commercial media. It made a range of staggering allegations against them, including being bought, feeding xenophobia, and slavishly following public opinion in supporting Chappelle Corby. It even defended the foreign system, which had so clearly abused Chappelle Corby's human rights. The message to the commercial media could not have been more clear. The requisite nature of future reporting could not have been more clearly indicated. This broadcast sent the same message to the ABC's own staff, whilst the position of the ABC board itself was starkly indicated by a column from board member Janet Albrechtson in a national newspaper. She defended the Indonesian regime and even wrote of Australians, quote, overdosing on compassion, unquote, in a shockingly hostile article. Janet Albrechtson had been appointed to the ABC board just a matter of weeks earlier by Australian Prime Minister John Howard. Another tried and trusted method to influence opinion is through humor and entertainment. The ABC were not slow to exploit this, using a variety of productions to embed subliminal acceptance of key messages. This has often involved direct ridicule of Chappelle Corby's family under cover of comedy and subtle references to create an impression of guilt and well-being. Examples abound, and even the internet is not sacred, with foul depictions of Chappelle Corby herself in banners and similar. Today, tonight, are on Jody's side. In the current affair, are on Mercedes's side. <laughs> and to represent these two, we've chosen these cheap, dim-witted dolls. <laughs> so after all that, what is the verdict? Well, they're both infuriating bogans. Oh, and the last image was Chappelle Corby thinking about what her postal vote would be. The problem was when she got there, the Senate paper, she tried to make a rolly. A bag of weed, a 
Okay, four kilo bag of loot. <laughs> Number two, how can we make Chappelle Corby feel better? Oh, is she a bit blue? She is. She wants to come home. The Prime Minister should be helping. He's not. Um, she is in prison. That does go with the territory, doesn't it? That is true. Uh, maybe we could smuggle in a bong. <laughs>
but defaming her sister Mercedes. After four weeks of hearings, Channel 7 and Today Tonight's outrageous claims have been exposed for what they are. A desperate grab for ratings at the expense of truth. I really hope that in future, Today Tonight, think hard before broadcasting attacks and lies about somebody. Never seen them smoke a joint? No. Never seen them have dope in their house? No. The godmother of my son. I trust her. I, I love the girl. She's beautiful. The whole Corby family. They're a beautiful family. For Jody to do this is... It's, it's not good. Did Today Tonight then embark on a vendetta against the Corbys? Just a couple of months after the first interview, they lured Mercedes to a confrontation with Jody and reporter Seymour. Their bait on this occasion was an outright lie. Despicably, the investigator hired by Seven claimed they'd obtained useful documents from a government official who had died in the Garuda air disaster. While the muckraking continued in Australia, in Bali, Chappelle remained in jail. Don't you, don't you feel you've been totally ridiculous no, with those not stories? At all. Not at all. How do you feel? something on um, on the six o'clock show whatever on the dri the drive show whatever it is on, on the evening of um, on the ABC and right. um, they they did a rebuttal on it at four o'clock in the morning oh, really? they apologized for their um, for the for their story at four o'clock in the morning is, is that so, when they broadcast the the apology that's when they broadcast an apology yeah one one such apology I forget exactly <laughs> oh my God. the um, what they what they said, but they said it at six o'clock at night, and then they broadcast their apology at four in the morning. In two thousand and eleven, the private investigator contracted by Australian television networks on the Chappelle Corby case broke his silence. It is, and I believe that he was paid by several others as well. But they don't always pay directly. Quite often, um, you know, the payments are made via third parties, i.e., someone like ourselves. You know, we're instructed to make the payments. So. Yeah. And uh, all of the networks were happy to throw uh, lots, lots of money, of money at, at it. Yeah. Oh, anything to do with 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 the name Corby. Um, but uh, once again, we investigated that, and spoke to many, many people, and there was. No link between Macaulay and any of the Corbys whatsoever. Phone records were checked, dating back uh, eight years. And there is no way that Macaulay knew the Corbys. He's just lying. But none of them went anywhere. Not one single one. And we followed and you, all of these. Yeah, and you guys were actually wanted as much dirt as you possibly could rake up on the Corbys, yet you still didn't strike pay dirt as you would say exactly when they were filming the Corbys did they ever find anything that suggests the Corbys were involved in drug smuggling in their covert operations no never Not, never 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 there was nothing and there was never one shred of evidence that ever came out that pointed us in the direction of Drugs, Corbys, ever. You're telling me that you told the television station that Kim was telling lies and they chose to ignore your advice and still ran with the story? That's correct, yes. I went into quite a bit of detail yeah. and uh, that was disregarded. I did so. caution them, I told them that Kim was telling lies. Um, I was encouraged to forget that. How did you feel about that? Well, it compromises us to the people that we work with. All of a sudden they're saying, well, don't do your investigation properly. Tell lies. And the hardest part with all these lies that they are telling is getting the media to print the truth. Why do you think they don't want to expose them? Is it because they actually um, created them? Look, that's, that's a fair point. That, that, that is a fair, fair statement, actually. Um, I hadn't looked at it like that, you know, because they've actually created them. 
and more. Other direct witnesses told similar stories, including Jade, who courageously refused to lie when she was subjected to extreme emotional pressure. But yeah. what makes me so angry, she got money for this. Yeah, do you know how much she got paid? Did she ever let on there how much she got paid for these, about, these lies she told? I think she, she might have been paid about all told $60,000 or something. She did get paid. I know she got paid, yeah, yeah. she told me. So she actually said to you, if you lie for me, you're going yep. to get a lot of money. Yep, I'll get lots of money and I'll get my, this will help strengthen my case to get my son back. Did you wonder how telling lies would actually get your son back? Correct me if I'm wrong here. Yeah. If you lied and said that your ex-partner was a drug runner, then he would be unfit to be the parent. Of the That's correct. And then he would have been maybe charged and then you would have got custody. Is that, is that the emotional game they were playing? Yes. So that's the the that the is glove. what they used as a bargaining chip for you? Yeah, basically, yep, that was it. I wasn't going to, love, it didn't matter. Like I said, I love my son, I miss my son. I, lo I went through two years of hell for fighting with him only to lose the custody hearing mm. and everything, you know, mm. what? and as I said, I had a million and one reasons to lie, but I wasn't going to. That wasn't the way to go about it. Yeah, what, destroy somebody else's life to get your own life That's on track. exactly right. That's exactly right. Yeah. No. I tried to tell them that she was lying mm. and not to use her, mm. and they didn't listen. I had spoken to him, and in conversation, I told him that she was lying. And they didn't listen? They did not listen. And they I ran the story? Yep, they went with the story anyway. And how did you feel about that? I was so angry. You know, and then I could have set the record straight and I would have set it on camera, she's a liar. And then maybe Chappelle wouldn't be in jail. To this day, the same disproved fabrications and smears appear regularly. And more. A common method to influence opinion is through repetitive use of damaging terminology. The ABC and the media in general consistently use the term convicted drug smuggler, Chappelle Corby, with its stark connotations and endorsement of the shocking trial. Convicted drug smuggler, Chappelle Corby. The convicted drug smuggler, Chappelle Corby. Convicted drug smuggler, Chappelle Corby has... Convicted barley drug smuggler, Chappelle Corby. Convicted drug smuggler, Chappelle Corby. This is illustrated by searching Australian news sites on a variety of terms. The convicted drug smuggler Chappelle Corby. 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 At the same time, the ABC has repeatedly censored news which might prove to be helpful to Chappelle Corby and which might engender public sympathy or support. A typical example of this was the news suppression of the global protest for her. This was the first ever global protest in support of an Australian in the entire history of the nation. It was the first cyber-driven protest in history to end at the United Nations HQ. It was even accompanied by a groundbreaking video and presented to the UN by a pop singer. Yet, despite the massive volume of trivia and smear broadcast about Chappelle Corby over the years, 
It wasn't referenced by the ABC at all. Not even once. It was completely hidden from the public. Over a period of years, the government has funded trips to Jakarta for dozens of journalists. These have been referred to as indoctrination trips. Many have returned to produce extremely hostile stories on Chappelle Corby through the ABC, Fairfax Media and others. And more. By October 2010, Chappelle Corby was seriously ill. She is now helpless, hopeless, she feels useless, she feels alienated, she feels removed from the rest of humanity. She is in a situation where she could easily move forward to kill herself. That she should be moved to a special hospital like the mental hospital. Why? Because she's mentally sick. A last-ditch humanitarian clemency appeal to the President of Indonesia was an effort to save her life. But the ABC produced damaging propaganda on behalf of the prison, who derived substantial access revenue from the presence of Chappelle Corby. Incredibly, the ABC sought to downplay her grave medical condition, which was central to her appeal. However, the report also accuses Chappelle Corby of faking it. If she's crazy, in my opinion, she won't be able to do the activities here. But she is able to do her makeup and she is able to exercise. She should stop creating nonsense sensations because it will only hurt her cake. But the governor's criticism will be hard to ignore. Matt Brown, ABC News. This was a cynical trick. The prison story wasn't a story at all. It was old, having been run and discredited months earlier by other channels. But the ABC ran it as credible, and as fresh news during a critical stage of the appeal. It was syndicated in Indonesia at the worst possible time. Then the cover-up. As soon as it had been syndicated, they edited the original web page to dilute and hide the original content but they were caught out by Google. With Chappelle Corby's life in the balance, the ABC had acted directly to tilt the scales against her. And the Australian Media Complaints Procedure? This is limited to individual broadcast which effectively prevents scrutiny of wider and serious issues. And of course, the Complaints Authority itself, a government agency. The ABC is an organ of state and, as such, has demonstrably supported government policy in undermining Chappelle Corby through a clear campaign of opinion management. It has orchestrated commercial channels, using subliminal messaging in entertainment broadcasts, engaged in hostile news management, and has censored supportive developments. It has been shown to have been central in shaping public opinion against her, and therefore, in contributing to her current desperate plight. TV and the newspaper and the magazine play their higher volume sales game. Why they ought to be ashamed for running down their nation dome. Fred 
prejudice to the chin of a girl coming home. But then for twisting the truth, the media 